morning everybody so um this is my first live video on facebook i hope i don't screw this up i also hope everybody's seeing the screen that i'm sharing here with the title uh, thank you so much for um the nice folks from the science festival in columbus for the kind invitation oh, i've got my assistant here nicola wants to be part of this as well so here we go so i'll be talking to you guys about um moving like fish across the world and you'll see that it's actually changed quite a bit over the last couple of years so this is a uh, me and my friend pedro duarte with um, a couple of sand tiger sharks back at the lisbon zoo in 95. now back in those days sharks were moved in these big boxes uh, which uh, very much looked like coffins uh, the sharks were inside, there was a pump moving water from um, uh, through a filter into their mouth and uh, they really couldn't move much and, uh, and you'll see that this is no longer what uh, what people do uh, these days people move them in wrong tanks but we'll get to there in, um, in, a couple of, um, in a couple more slides so this is the sort of an outdated way to do things now this is Mark Smith, my friend João Falcato. We're in Florida getting ready to pack all these sharks and rays and some other fish as well uh, onto this Severine um, Boeing 747 so that they could all be flown to the Lisbon Oceanario back in 98 when it started. Now notice that there were no oxygen probes, no pH probes, no pH buffers, you know, no chemicals to keep pH stable no amquel which is a chemical used to detoxify ammonia so back in those days really all we did to check on things was to open the lid of the tank look inside and see if there were bubbles coming out the oxygen bubbles so if we had bubbles we were happy if no bubbles we in trouble so that's pretty much what, what what it was back in those days so this is us actually making the tanks um, you know we bought the tanks but then we had to make the lids with the just uh, bolt everything together and varnish them and a lot, a lot of work. Uh, you know, just cut the wood so that we would have these nice round lids. So everything was a little um, rudimentary back in those days. Now, this is a transport I did to Valencia in Spain um, while working for the Oceanario still. Uh, I suppose I developed a reputation for being moderately competent doing these um live fish transport so the folks from valencia actually hired me to do the transport for them and uh, back in these days we were using an oxygen probe and a ph probe to monitor water quality during the transport so things were a little more sophisticated you can see that we were also using these wonderful wooden frames to protect the oxygen cylinders so things were a little more professional but still, you know, very much um, simple, still no chemicals for pH or ammonia. Now, this, I eventually I left the Oceanario and I started my own company, Flying Sharks. And um, this is us in one of our very first orders, moving four sunfish. There's one sunfish inside each of these tanks from Lisbon to um, Atlanta, Georgia. This picture was taken at JFK Airport in New York after flying uh, cargo flight DHL from Lisbon to Brussels then JFK and then we chartered this amazing 1948 DC-4 that we flew down to Atlanta uh, let me just point out something cool you'll see this uh, little uh, bar here at the end uh, you, you guys can see the, my little mouse pointing there now this bar may not seem uh, like much but it's actually what's keeping the plane um, standing because if you start loading the plane and you put too much weight in the back the um, the back of the plane the end of the, the rear end of the plane will actually boom, fall on the ground so you need this part it's very important uh, you can only pull it out after the engines are on and there's actually some thrust you know uh, uh, propelling the gravity center of the plane forward so that it doesn't fall because as you can see the there's the front landing gear and then there's um, a couple of uh, landing gears under the wings so the, a lot of weight is um, is in the back anyway so but I'm not all shipments are done in big tanks 
and with planes and everything like you've seen before. A lot of times it can be as simple as keeping a couple of fish in some plastic containers. This is our facility in Peniche, a small town north of Lisbon where I teach. Um, my students have been helping me for many, many years. Our facility has grown immensely in the last few years, but this is how it started. And we used to pack small yeah, fish in, um, in, um, in plastic bags and put them inside styrofoam boxes, which can then be taken through the, to the airport where they fly to, you know, all over the world. Or we c it can be as simple as we take them to UPS, who then uh, take them anywhere we want to. Now, let's jump to 2008. We're moving some meager here, some, um, uh, some big fish to Tarragona in Spain. This is Nicola, very excited about the plane that's coming on the next slide. And, uh, but this time, the client actually hired us only for the fish and the, and the service to go in the transport. But the client actually hired this truck from an aquaculture facility, which basically has multiple rectangular tanks, no filtration, just uh, oxygen. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of this method. Um, I know aquaculture facilities have been using this for a long time, but uh, there's some mortalities here and there. And you'll see in a few slides that we actually plan, or we are changing this paradigm um, substantially. Now here's our biggest order ever. This was our signature order back in 2010. We were ordered some 3000 plus fish from the Istanbul Aquarium which we collected in multiple locations in Portugal, not just mainland Portugal, but also in the Azores and Funchal in Madeira. And it took two full planes, two Airbus 300, fully loaded with tanks to move these fish to Istanbul. Now, these are my friends in the Azores um, collecting fish, which were kept inside 40-foot shipping containers, three of these. Um, and you know very rudimentary conditions you know people were using their private cars to have light at night there was a, a diesel generator to power the whole thing water changes done with the pump you know very very hard work but after three four months we had enough fish that all of the Azorian fish were collected in these uh, containers which were basically put on a ship and um, we drove the ship ourselves to Lisbon as you can see here in the picture that's Rui Guedes. I'm joking, I really didn't drive the whole way, <laughs> obviously. But, uh, but we had a lot of fun and uh, absolutely no mortalities. So all of these fish collected in the Azores were then consolidated to the ones uh, collected in the south of Portugal. And we put all 44 tanks inside these two Airbus 300s and we flew them to Istanbul. Now at this point, we did have oxygen probes and pH probes. Also the pH buffers to keep pH stable and the Amquel to detoxify ammonia. Notice the little orange circle here around pro the protein skimmer. This is something that we use for fish that are notorious for producing a lot of gunk. And this is something we absolutely do not, um, we won't move a fish without these protein skimmers anymore. They are absolute lifesavers and we're very, very happy with them. Uh, let's move on to 2016, where we were asked by our friends in Springfield, Missouri um, to move this Wells catfish, uh, almost three meter long fish collected by our friends from the Zaragoza Aquarium in Spain. We designed and built this tank ourselves with our bare hands. Uh, I could be here all day telling you about uh, technical specifications of this tank, which is prepared to, you know, to uh, there's filtration for the, t the animal, of course, um, oxygen addition, it's also prepared to run on battery power, on shore power. And after Zaragoza, uh, truck took the tank to uh, Madrid, where it was palletized, and then it flew to Chicago, after which it took another um, 10 hours or so to travel down to Springfield. Now, this is a very simple transport that we've done from Oberhausen in Germany to Lisbon for the Oceanario, we moved a couple of black tip sharks, very simple, easy transport. And then, you know, normally I wouldn't even share something this simple with you guys, except for this one detail. This is the first time we used uh, a voltage inverter. So we connected this um, apparatus here to the Vans 12 volt battery, which this um, uh, um, device then converts 
the 12 volts to 220 volts, which allows for very, very stable filtration. The other aspect that was important is also that we used um, a refrigerated vent. So we could keep the water as cold as possible throughout the, the duration of the trip. And that actually plays a very important role in keeping everything nice and stable. And now obviously we don't want to chill the fish down too much. But if you keep your temperature temperature colder than normal, um, that actually has a very nice effect and keeps the, the um, animals happier. Now, let's move on to 2018. And um, I wish we could interact because uh, I would ask you guys, you know, what, what is inside this tank? And, um, and, you know, you could try to guess it. But uh, I'll, just, um, I'll just tell you what it's inside. It's uh, about half of the volume here is water. And then, of course, we've got pure oxygen on top. And then there's a small sunfish that was moved to Hirtshals in the north uh, sec section of uh, Denmark. And here it is, the, that very sun, that same sunfish. The first we moved in July 2014, the second in 2018. And here are those two animals uh, years after. This was actually the North Sea Museum's Christmas postcard back in 2019 just see how big these animals are especially this one the animal that was moved in 2014 this is our friend Christina feeding this this fish in the tank this was again a Christmas postcard from the this uh, amazing facility and this animal just grew and grew and grew now uh, this is um, let's say standard transport that we did also in 2018 more than 2,000 mackerel, quite a few rays and quite a few other fish were moved inside this 40-foot shipping container again, uh, which came by ship from the Azores to Lisbon. And we then put it on top of a truck and drove all the way to Koenigswinter and Stralsund um, in Germany. Now, the cool thing about this transport is that from the moment the first fish were packed inside the container in the Azores, and then they were there for a couple of days to acclimate, and then they were moved by ship and then we move, moved to the first facility in Germany, spent the day there and then the second facility, lots of traffic, lots of delays. So by the time the last fish was pulled out of the tanks, these fish had been in transit for 11 days. So this is 2000 plus fish, like nearly 2300 fish, 11 days in transit, zero mortalities. And this is something we're quite proud of. Notice the um, orange circle around the protein skimmer there. Again, like I said before, protein skimmers are an absolute lifesaver. Those things are basically pulling out gunk from the water. You know, all that organic uh, matter is just pulled out continuously. Because one thing is, uh, is um, you know, a canister filter, a sand filter. Those are basically pulling stuff out of the water, but it stays in the filter. So water keeps flowing through that gunk. Although it's clear and it looks better, but it's still part of the system. Not with the protein skimmer, because the protein skimmer is basically creating all that nice foam that actually leaves the tank and it collects in a container that we dump on gas stations. So we're effectively pulling out um, just murky, horrible water out of the system, which is very, very nice. Um, we were actually doing some water quality measurements on this stop, you know, just checking for pH, for um, for um, ammonia, temperature, oxygen, and you know, so things are a little more sophisticated than before. Let's jump to 2019, very, very similar transport. This time we moved some um, salmon smolt from Norway to Aveiro in the north of Portugal. We actually did the smoltification in process, which means that they started at zero salinity, zero parts per thousand. We actually added salt until we reached the salinity of seven parts per thousand. So we imitated what happens in nature during the transport which is uh, which was very cool now I'm not going to bore you with the um, boring charts but i am going to brag a little bit about these two here uh, these are ph charts of those um, uh, two of those four tanks in the truck you know notice that we add sodium bicarbonate sodium carbonate to the tanks and it takes us a couple hours to get into a nice rhythm and uh, after we do after things become stable notice that gorgeous flat line just flat throughout the rest of the transport uh, absolutely motionless pH just very very stable throughout the second half of the trip this is a really nice um, trip that we took to Iceland to pack some codfish 
Now, I don't, I'm, you guys are probably not very familiar with these numbers that I'm showing here. Um, this transport, we had 128 kilos per cubic meter, per 1,000 liters. Now, that is absolutely insane. Most people, will, including us, will use 15 to 20 kilos per cubic meter. But by using very, very nice cold water, one degree Celsius cold water, that's like 33 Fahrenheit, and uh, with kick-ass buffering, so lots of chemicals that basically ensure that ammonia is zero and that pH is very stable. By doing that, we were able to move two codfish per bag at this amazing rate, which is actually stunning. Now, the reason I uh, put this slide is also because these guys, the Marine Icelandic Research Institute, um, is uh, our partner in this next project, which, which, which I'll finish, which is our transport unit that has received some funding from the um, uh, EEA grants from Iceland, Liechtenstein and Norway grants. Uh, our friends from the Iceland Marine Research Institute are doing uh, some consulting with us for this. Now this is a, a game changer. This is basically another 40 foot shipping container, but with state of the art containers, state of the art filtration. In fact, things are so hot here that we actually changed it from a, we don't longer call it a transport unit, we call it a mobile holding station. Because effectively, this is like we have our holding station in Peniche or the Azores and we put some wheels on it and we travel all over the world. We no longer have to worry about getting there fast because this thing will basically keep the fish for, for years if, if need be. Now, um, there's a lot of technical aspects here so we can take, um, take in volt, different types of voltage, 24, 110, 380, which is what we need for ships. Uh, 17 cubic meters with advanced life support system, advanced lighting as well because we want um, the fish to be packed in a very low lighting, also to be moved in a low lighting environment, but we still have to see what we're doing, right? Um, water parameters are basically um, recorded and corrected automatically. We actually we can um, monitor everything by going in the car behind this um, holding station and we look on our phones and we see what the pH is like, what ammonia is like, oxygen, etc. There's a camera so we can see what, uh, what's happening inside and a little router that basically generates its own uh, Wi-Fi signal. So it doesn't matter where we are in the world, we don't need to pay 254 euros a minute if we're out of the European Union. This thing will generate its own internet so that we can have uh, a live feed from inside the tank at all times. Needless to say, there's going to be a coffee machine because these things, you know, it's a lot of work. So we drink a lot of Red Bull and we drink a lot of coffee also during these trips. And um, I'll just uh, finish off by thanking you for being on that side and by thanking these guys again, the EEA grants for supporting us in this project. So thank you so much. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop me a line and um, I can answer them as best as I can. Thanks so much.